Harry, please. Otherwise, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Thank you. Uh, n- now sit down. On pressing issues, we think it is very important to respect one another. To treat each other like we would like to be treated. I want a hug. If you don't like the United States, son, why don't you move to Russia? I don't understand people in America today. They call this a Cold War, but it's hotter than hell. Mark my words, any day now you're sitting in school passing notes and talking about the prom when suddenly you look out the window and there are Russian paratroopers dropping in to take over. What can you do? Run into the woods with your friends? Call yourselves the Wolverines? Put twigs in your hand? Try to beat back the Ruskies? No, you hightail it to Pastor Richard's salvation statue and blast off into space. But there is a limited amount of space. That's why I suggest anyone who wants the safety and security of your own bunker, give now. Call 866-9-SAVE-ME. We'll get you on the payment plan, and if you're paid in full on D-Day, you and your family will be safe. If not, you may have to choose to save yourself and leave the others behind. Hey, 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 stop selling things on my show. You're not a value sponsor who supports the art of public radio, buddy. I, for one, welcome our new Russian masters. We can learn so much from other cultures. Did you know in India, the women protest by setting themselves on fire? I tell you, next time the kids are screaming for ice cream and pop, I may just douse myself in kerosene. I use that as a threat to my kids all the time, so it's no wonder they're so screwed up. That's one of the tough things about being a mom, not ruining their lives with guilt. Uh, As a matter of fact, I don't let my kids watch cartoons or slasher flicks. Really? That Knife After Dark movie may be number one in the box office, but my kids certainly ain't going to see it. If you don't raise your kids right, they end up being like Nude Boy over there or uh, working in radio. I want them to get proper jobs, like being a doctor, not a patient. That is offensive. My mother understood I was special. She made me wear a bonnet as a child, and when I demanded to go to school naked, she was fine with it. After social services moved me, she would still write to me. I still remember when she kissed me goodbye. But, Barry, earlier you said you discovered naturism, taking your clothes off, whatever it is in Germany. I know, but I lie a lot. Uh, I've got a lot of personal issues. Look at me. Please, Maurice, I need a hug. There's another example of immorality in this city. Public showing of affection. People think we want to see the making out and carrying on. I understand your hormones rage like a wild animal and you want to ravage one another like there's no tomorrow. But you have to ignore what your body is telling you and work for a higher calling. Like construction. We're building a statue and we need your help. Call me now. You know, pretty soon you won't be able to tell who's a human and who's an android. Why, the corporation is working on it right now. I know, I read about it. I tell my kids not to kiss other kids at school. It might be an android. Suck your brains out. You must have seen the miniseries event on television. I read it in a book. We've got to stop looking at the stars, all this science fiction, and focus on the family. Now, if you really want to dance like you're on the moon, go there and leave us in peace. And that's a fact. Uh, uh, What's a fact? I'm sorry, Maurice, but I have to tell you, I moved to Florida to bring my kids up the American way in a theme park. And that's just the kind of person I am, opinionated and moronic. I see. Well, this panel is certainly interesting. The issue is morality. Recently, rock artists joined together to provide famine aid to Alaska with the song, Do They Know It's the Fourth of July? Critics complain it's immoral to meddle in the affairs of other peoples and cultures. Pastor Richards... What? Uh, what do you make of meddling in other people's business like an over-opinionated sociopath? Well, let me say that money could have gone to much better things like reserving a place by my side in the Pastor Richard Salvation statue. But I digress and plug. Stop doing Don't that. Don't interrupt me, boy. Anywho, I address the Alaska issue in Chapter 23 of my book. You see, the Alaskans are lunatics, plain and simple. They eat whales and snow and they sleep in the freezer. Who wants to eat snow every day? Oh, I tried to help. I sent a helicopter with copies of my book, but they burned them in a pile for heat. If the people of Alaska choose to live there, let them. But don't come crying when you're tired of eating penguin and it snows 18 feet a day. Yes, but don't you think it's important? I think to- it's very important to listen to me, young man. That's what makes the state of Florida great. Rather than help improve where they are, people nationwide abandon their hometowns, come down here, and shove their beliefs down everyone else's throats. That's the American way, always has been. We should send some pictures of Florida to those people in Alaska. I tell you, they'd throw down that bear pelt, saddle up the sled dogs, and get pulled all the way to Vice City. And I should know, I'm from Mars. No, you're not. Uh... Mars, Alabama. I founded three colleges there. The problem with Alaska is that people don't get naked. 
If you can't work on your car or play the cello or use sharp knives in your birthday suit, then what's the point of living? Uh, well, it is a bit cold there. People put on clothes when it's cold. We evolved without a warm covering of hair. That's a lie, sir. We come from the great meteor of truth. Clothes are a habit, like shaving and taking out the trash. As soon as you stop, you realize what a prisoner you were to society and the twisted state of morality. People think that nudists are immoral. Well, we're not. I'm married. I love my wife. In our commune, it's so wonderful to wake up in a big bed and go to breakfast clothed in nothing but a smile. What kind of people are there in your weirdo commune? Single people, families, elderly couples, teachers, politicians, and especially truck drivers. Truck drivers understand what it's like to be by yourself for days on end with nothing but country music on the radio and a stick in your hand shifting gears over and over. Truckers realize there's nothing to be ashamed of on the open road. Get naked and beat it on down the line. You've never seen a sense of community and morality like a nudist colony. We share everything. The cooking, cleaning, wives. A share sense of what it's like to be a complete social outcast. Oh, uh, wait right there, Barry. I'm getting something through the cans. Uh, headphones, that is. Yes? Yeah, okay. Uh, we just want to tell you a little more about public radio funding. We'll be right back after this. Hello, I'm sure you're enjoying our high-quality programming. I'm Michelle Montanius. Jonathan, I think it's time to acknowledge the people who are sending money in to shut us up and end this dreadful begathon. Here's a $10 pledge from Fran in Little Havana. Wow, you think she could have given more than that? Yes, mean bitch. I hope she dies an agonizing death. Absolutely, Michelle. And remember, if you want us to wish you well, dig deep. And dig soon. That's right. At any moment, conservatives could vote to end our funding and place a fast food restaurant where our studios are. See, there are some people that think everything has to make money. It doesn't. That's why you should give now. Correct. Next week is Environmental Week, sponsored by My Batsu and the Vice City Power Corporation. And next month, we're celebrating Proust's influence on Vice City in association with the Degenitron. But for now, let's return to pressing issues. Remember, VCPR is an advertising-free zone, much like the moon or Times Square. Welcome back. The show is Pressing Issues. The subject is morality. I'm Maurice Chavez. Let's carry on pressing the issue. Now, when the Europeans were done ruining their continent with bland food and soccer riots and arrived in the Americas in the late 15th century, the subject soon turned to morality. You see, Europeans wanted to colonize America, so they had somebody to make fun of. The pilgrims left England for the religious freedom in Holland, where they visited coffee shops, and after they packed up their ships with plenty of coffee, tea, and cakes to liven up the trip, they set sail for the New World which they heard had a magnificent roller coaster. Once they got here, they were very hungry, having been on a ship for 65 days. So they ate for three days straight. Thanksgiving quickly became an annual custom. America was founded by people who wanted a place where they could tell other people how to live. And I'm a history major. But do we have the right? The question, is it moral to celebrate Thanksgiving, a holiday that is clearly about gluttony, annoying relatives, and awful casserole. Well, I for one love a casserole, and at my weekly meeting, my congregation has a potluck. You see, a casserole is a lot like life, Maurice, and that's the basis of my philosophy. If you put a bunch of leftovers from the fridge in a pan and bake it, somebody will probably eat it. It's like my book. You believe in your favorite sports team, then they get massacred. You believe in gravity, then it turns upside down on you. You love your favorite TV show, then the network ends it with a lousy finale. But you can believe in me, and if you believe in something, support it. It's one thing to love something, but if you don't shower it with money, then just don't talk to me. Communism, don't make me puke my guts out, please. Well, I myself love casseroles on Thanksgiving. And the way to teach your children the rich history of America is through theme parks. I just love Pilgrim World, especially the part where you get to slaughter your own buffalo and take home the meat, or give the locals the flu while buying their land off them for a pittance. That's what children need. Uh, uh, what is? Wholesome activities that benefit the family. Now, what good is it if a kid plays Degeneratron for five hours? Oh, sure, he's killing space aliens, thank you very much, but it ain't putting food. 